Next, I would like to invite Mr. Kim Ha-ki to make presentation about the conversions of the copyright and literature and art. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kim Ha-ki from Korea Literature, Academic Works, and Art Copy Association. Actually, I was a member of the ICOTEC conference preparation committee, and now I am making the presentation at this conference. I am honored to make this presentation. And many people helped us hold the conference in 2011, and today I meet many familiar faces. And I would like to and I am honored to have this opportunity to make presentation. The first session is about copyright technology for all. I want to talk about the meaning of copyright for everyone. This conference is about copyright technologies and the changing trends in the digital environment. Now, I would like to explain about the copyright perspectives on the technology and digital environment. Except for music, which was explained before, in the area of literature and art, there are many issues related to copyright. With the spread of COVID-19 and development of digital technology have brought about various issues and incidents. So I would like to talk about those issues we have in the area of literature and art. In June 2021, there was the first NFT-related issue in Korea, starting from the artist Kim han gi and Chang Michelle Basquia. Oh, they didn't want their product their artwork to be traded on the NFT network, their works were traded on the NFT. At that time, the NFT industry was lack of understanding on the concept of copyright. So the NFT network made apologies and they created NFT copyright guideline. Most of the copyrighted works traded on NFT uh, without permission of the owner of the copyright were fine art works and photos. After the incident took place in 2021, we cooperated with Korea Copyright Commission and investigated 12 NFT exchanges in Korea. Fortunately, in June 2021, we saw no further infringement of copyright of Korean artists, but as we investigated the NFT exchanges, we found many problems. Users were able to download high-resolution artworks of these artists, and in many cases, the NFT exchanges just handed over the responsibility accountability to the users who downloaded the artworks. And in some cases, some NFT exchanges served as uh, the tax haven. This is why we always um, think about the problems of NFT exchange um, in terms of its uh, credibility and reliability. And in sometimes, we are not sure if the certain copyrighted works really came from the actual original copyright holder. There are various types of art, basic art, pure art, and commercial art. There is clear difference among these different areas of arts. Traditional art 
parties like fine art and photography often come to us asking for help regarding their copyright infringement. And there's a large scale fine art work of Kim Han Gi. If we have to scan the file, it takes a, a, a very expensive money. And we also need to think about the right to produce secondary works. But still, NFT has brought about a big change in copyright industry because we began to talk about the copyright um, issues in a full swing. And the relevant commissions are making efforts to solve NFT-related problems. And also NFT exchanges are giving guidelines to solve many technical uh, problems. From NFT artist perspectives, they might want their copyrighted works to be actively traded on the NFT exchange. But in the fine art area, there is big difference between traditional art and digital art. In the visual art sector, they're making effort to adopt NFT. And they are seriously thinking about the right to produce secondary works. Next issue is metaverse. Today, I am making presentation because I participated, I am participating in a metaverse R&D project. What I do is that on the metaverse, when a copyrighted artwork is traded on the metaverse, it should be properly paid for and distributed. And that requires technologies. And I am conducting the R&D on this technology. In the case of architecture works, there was a one academic conference on the architectural works that are traded in the metaverse. Because we thought about the copyright protection of the architectural works that exist in the metaverse. And there are the types of content created in Metaverse. We have to see whether the content created in Metaverse has the value as uh, the property or copyrighted work. And how are we going to deal with the copyright regarding the Metaverse content? And some people see Metaverse as a game. Some other people see Metaverse as a platform. If it is a game, Let's say that there's a copyright infringement in Metaverse, then we have to claim that the copyright was infringed to the game uh, manufacturer. But if Metaverse is just a platform, we have to hold the users of the content accountable for the copyright infringement. That's why we have to make definition of Metaverse, whether it is a game or a platform. Depending on how we define Metaverse, the way we deal with copyright issues in Metaverse will become changed. Regarding this, Korea Content Promotion Agency and the Korea Copyright Commission uh, helped us in figuring out a way to deal with the copyright issues in Metaverse. We are conducting the relevant R&D, which will continue by 2024. Third issue is YouTube. So I took an example uh, YouTube, but other content that are similar to YouTube contents could be included here. There's a content called YouTube ID. As mentioned by the TikTok speaker, it is important to monitor the use of copyrighted content in YouTube and make the payment and settlement of the copyright uh, to the copyright holder. Actually, many YouTube members claim that their copyrighted work uh, was infringed. 
music and Im video image can be monitored, but literature, fine art image, and photos are not yet being monitored in YouTube. That's why it is difficult to pay and settle the royalty or copyright fee for the copyrighted literature and photo in YouTube. And we conducted a survey regarding this. We had eight youth monitor um, agents who monitored the situation for two weeks. They monitored the situation in YouTube for two weeks. There was a booktube channel. We found 376 booktube channels for two weeks. Among them, among the booktube channels, 70% of them were using literature works without permission of the copyright holder. And there were about 3 million users who watch the literature content that was distributed without the permission of the copyright holder. 3 million users is not a large number compared to music industry, but the booktube operators who used the literature works without the permission of the copyright holder earned a large amount of profit. And it was difficult for us to ask the booktubers to delete the uh, content that they were distributing without the permission of the author. And we have to ask the booktube operator to uh, pay for the royalty. But, you, but the YouTuber just says that only 3 million users watched my content, watched the content, so I cannot make payment to the uh, copyright owner. But what I can do is just to delete the content. So it's difficult to settle payment on copyright in the YouTube channel. Next issue is related to broadcasting. Some of you may not understand why we're talking about broadcasting, but literature and art sector is not receiving uh, much royalty from broadcasting sector. Literature, visual art, and so on are being uh, used and distributed by broadcasting companies, but they are not fully paying the royalty to the copyright owners because we are lack of the monitoring activities. In 2021, maybe from the end of May 2021, we uh, started the entrusted uh, task of monitoring the copyright issues in literature and uh, image uh, works by broadcasting companies. At first, we didn't know how to investigate the situation. There were about 390 broadcasting channels in Korea. In order to monitor each of the 390 uh, channels, we had to use a lot of personnel. And the and numberless contents are being distributed across broadcasting media, and none of them were being treated and processed perfectly, and it requires much more staff and personnel to properly monitor the copyright issues in broadcasting. In the case of uh, music industry, they have a system called Bromis to monitor how music is being used and distributed in broadcasting channels. Just like that, we need uh, the similar system and technology in the lit literature and art se sector so that we can uh, bring the, the royalty of the copyrighted work to the accurate copyright holder. After the COVID-19 uh, broke out, we faced serious problems with education. 
Our association is a CMO and we also receive compensation, not only textbook but also the classes materials and teaching materials that are used in elementary school and high schools are dealt with by our activities. With COVID-19, online education became prevalent and internet co education and online sharing of educational content became the mainstream trend and we have had constraints in receiving all the compensation for the use of the copyrighted educational content. So there's a demand that we have to expand the compensation system. And we also received the request that the compensation guideline must be clearly defined and the scope of permission for use of the educational content should be changed. In calculating the scope of permission for using certain educational content is a difficult and complicated process. And we talk about the adoption of ECL. With the development of digital technology and the outbreak of COVID-19, we have higher demand for ECL. And this is the new topic in our area, the relevant um, amendments are also being proposed. Actually, the Korea Copyright Commission is receiving help from our association to see if the copyrights are properly uh, processed and uh, managed. We are working with a British company and if you look at the program book, if you look at the materials of foreign speakers and my uh, presentation materials, you will not see any copyrighted work because we are careful not to infringe the copyrights. But it's different for teachers. Do you think that teachers at schools will be able to give lecture to their students without any image, without any copyrighted work in the textbook and teaching materials? So we are trying to develop the technologies that will make this job uh, easier. Next issue is publishing. In the Bill Rosenblatt uh, presentation, the last presentation was very impressive because that's the most important, most difficult uh, part. Higher education and published higher education and the academic uh, papers are one of the most important areas where it's very difficult to deal with the copyright issues. We have to have DOI, ECI, and DOI. An ISBN presentation was actually my first time, and we heard that ISCC identifier will soon be published for one copyrighted work, dozens of identifiers can be matched. I don't think this is going to be easy. And there are many issues in the publish, publishing sector, depending on whether it's paper book or e-book. Now, paper book market is not growing, and e-book market is growing, but the growth is mostly around the webtoon and web novels web novels and webtoons should be regarded as digital content or should we regard webtoon and web novels as a type of book? ISBN is matched to a book. Then can we use ISBN to webtoon and web novel and to what extent? In the case of audio book, the, as the previous speaker said, we need to think about the, the, the voice actors in the audio book. If we produce audio book with the voice actor, then sh should we have to recognize the, the right of the voice actor here as well? And if we use 
AI tools and make create uh, content. As we heard from the presentation, there are works that are jointly created by a person and AI. In the case of co-created works, the copyright becomes effective for 70 years after the person uh, dies. And if one of the co-creator is AI, then until when should we recognize the copyright? This is a task we have to solve. This is realistical thing. Till when do we have to recognize the copyright of an artwork that was created by both AI and a human? As you walk around uh, the, the neighborhood around colleges, you will see many uh, stores that provide the, the scanning or copying services where they're actually scanning and copying uh, the copyrighted books. In principle, such uh, copying of books without permission of the copyright owner is illegal, but that is being done just openly. And that makes us think about the meaning and possibility of proprietary uh, copying practices and technologies. Also regarding AI, we have a lot of uh, things to think about from the literature and art uh, perspective. Actually, there are many technologies underlying this sector, including technologies that protect uh, cop copyright and portrait right. So if the process is divided into protection, permission on usage, payment settlement, and distribution, we have to think about the gap between protection of copyrighted work and intellectual property right. Regarding the permission and usage, we have to think about whether the permission should be made before the usage or after the usage. In terms of payment, payment should be made accurately on a real-time basis. Distribution of royalty requires efficiency and transparency. That's why there are many people um, using various technologies to enable all these four categories of copyright uh, management. Copyright management consists of copyrighted work management technology and intellectual property right related requirements. Requirements here mean the requirements from industries and businesses. So is there metadata in copyrighted work? And do we have digital file of the copyrighted work? Do we have DNA? No, that's not truth. In the case of photo photographies, fine artwork, we don't have all the meta information, digital file and DNA prepared. And in the case of novel, it takes a long time to get the metadata, digital file and DNA. And contract relationship is very important. In most of the cases, the contract relationship is often uh, not publicly open. And since contract is related to money and distribution of profit, oftentimes the contract relationship is not uh, disclosed. And they are also bound, bounded by the non-disclosure agreement. And when there are several copyright holders, we have to contact each of the copyright holders to make payment. Another thing that requires our review, in terms of the copyright laws and regulations, there are various technological issues. First of all, whether the platform is OSP or a special purpose OSP. And we have to see if the technical protection measures are prepared well. 
And we have to think about the scope of copyright, whether it is the right to display or the right to communication to the public. And there are limits and constraints in the copyright law. There are tons of issues we should review for a single copyright. So as a person working in the field, in terms of the copyright technologies and digital environment, how can we converge literature, art, and copyright technology. First, I'll talk about conversions between literature, art, and R&D. Uh, my presentation is from the perspective of Literature and Artwork Association. I have conducted about five R&D projects. One was done last year, and the others are currently underway. I am participating in four copyright-related uh, R&D projects. Convergence between literature, art, and IT. This is the scope of uh, management we have. Our association deals with literature, visual art, video image, and performance art. And we also receive compensation for the use of educational content without permission of the copyright owner. Depending on the form of book, the approaches and perspectives of copyright can become different. And depending on whether some artwork is pure traditional art or digital commercial art, the way we apply copyright to NFT or metaverse will become changed. Things are much more difficult in art sector because often we don't know who is the copyright owner of a play. Uh, we don't know who is the copyright holder of, for example, a choreography. To find that, we need a fixed form of copyrighted work and name of the copyrighted work. Also, there could be disputes over uh, the copying of the copyrighted works without the permission of the copyright owner. I talked about the copyright owners, but we also need to think about the perspectives of, uh, of those who have the utility model who have the right to a utility model. So things can become different depending on the stakeholder. And in terms of the right to publish fine art, we can come across different types of discussions. And it is very difficult to have all the communication with diverse stakeholders. This is R&D convergence. We have digital copyright technologies like forensic filtering, watermark, and we have other digital technologies, including AI. These technologies can be properly converged, but actually software developers, operators, and companies and entrusted management organizations will be using these uh, technologies in order to make our R&D project a success. We have to understand the ecosystem together with the software developers, distributors, and entrusted management organizations. From my experience, I always explain about the R&D on copyright issues to the software developers, distributors, and other stakeholders for the whole year. So it means that we need to educate many stakeholders on the copyright concept. So now this is my conclusion. 
I am not a copyright technology developer, but actually I meet with copyright owners, I meet with engineers, I meet with distributors. My talk is based on my personal experience, so some of my comments uh, might be incorrect, but first comment is that there is uh, the gap difference between copyright sector and technology sector. Copyright uh, stakeholders are lack of knowledge on technologies. They like it if it uh, makes them earn money, but they don't know much about NFT or blockchain. And people in the technology sector have a lack of understanding on copyright. Some people think that if someone has a copyright, then that person will become uh, immediately successful. And those in the technology sector, they are concerned about uh, the cost, for example, the cost for maintaining the server. So the stakeholders in the copyright sector and stakeholders in the technology sector have different levels of understanding on each other, and they are lack of the efforts to truly understand each other better. That's why we need to conduct joint projects between the two different sectors. That's why also we why we are having this kind of copyright technology conference. Not only the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, but also other stakeholders have helped us. Through their help, we have been conducting various R&D projects related to the copyright of literature and artwork. In the short term and in the long term, we have to come up with strategies Maybe we can conduct plus three years period of R&D. Also, we need to recognize the importance of trials and errors. If we, even if we have technical failure for now, we can become successful after several more years of preparation. We need to become patient in this area. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. He shared with us the um, presentation and emphasized the importance of short-term and long-term strategies.